Okay. To finish the week, I actually smartened up with notes uh, for Thursday here, uh, our fourth and last lesson of the week, and put them on paper uh, as the questions take too long to copy, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. And um, I will post these on Google Classroom so you can just feel free to watch. Okay? The first question here says, which table of values represents a linear function? Now, remember for a linear function, there has to be a constant rate of change. Okay, so the same increase of x as we see uh, all the way through. Uh, for each increase of x, it's the same increase for y. So I'll explain in the first one. So check to see if it's the same increase for x all the way down. So if we go to 0 to 3 to 6 to 9, yes, that's an increase of 3. So let's check here. From negative 6 to negative 2, that's an increase of 4. From negative 2 to 3, it's an increase of 5. So it's not the same, but it's not to say it's not right. Um, and then negative 4 to negative 1, um, negative 1 to 2, 2 to 4. Well, from negative 4 to negative 1, it's an increase of 3. Negative 1 to 2, increase of 3, but then 2 to 4, increase of 2. Hmm. Not looking like it's that one. Um, from negative 2 to 1, increase of 3. 1 to 4, increase of 3. 4 to 7, increase of 3. So the whole thing is an increase of 3. So let's look at A and D. Now for the Y's, from 5 to 4, it's minus 1. From 4 to 2, it's minus 2. It's not the same. Uh, from negative 7 to negative 4, that's an increase of 3. Negative 4 to negative 1, increase of 3. And negative 1 to 2, increase of 3. So it's the same increase of x all the way through, same increase of y. So d is our answer. These were a different increase um, of x. Example number 2. So Addison was given a gift card for a coffee shop. Each morning she uses the card to buy one cup of coffee. A represents the amount of money on the card, or amount of money left. So money left on card, where X is the number of cups of coffee. Okay. Determine the original amount of money on the gift card. Well, the original amount of money means we purchased zero cups, or rather, the x is zero. And anytime x is zero, okay, that means we're on the y-axis. So what we need to find is the y-intercept. So let's first start by finding the slope. And then we'll look at the equation for this table. So I'm going to do, um, I'll use these two points. So 28 minus 36 over 3 minus 1. So negative 8 over 2 is negative 4. Okay. So the equation, the money left on the card, is mx plus b. So negative 4 times x plus b. Now I want to find the b, right? The y-intercept is the b. So I'm going to use a point on my table. Let's use uh, 16 or 616 since I used the other two for the slope. So plug in 16 for a, negative 4 times 6 for x plus b. So 16 equals negative 24 plus b. To solve for b we add 24 and our b is 40. So our y-intercept is 40. Again, that's where x is 0. So my answer, the original amount of money on the gift card, is $40. Okay, number 3. The weight in pounds of a newborn baby t months after birth. 
Okay, so this is how much they weigh after, say, two months, three months, four months after they were born, modeled by the equation here. So the weight is negative or is positive two times the month after they were born plus eleven. What is the y-intercept of the equation? So the y-intercept of the equation is eleven. And what is its interpretation in the context of the problem? Well, remember, right? The y-intercept here is zero eleven. So t, right? is the months after it was born, so mx plus b. So if the y-intercept is 11, that means the months born was zero. So at birth, the weight was, is 11 pounds. Or you can say at a time of zero or at zero months, the weight is 11. Okay? Number four. So Naomi filled up her car with gas before embarking on a road trip across the country. Let G represent the number of gallons of gas remaining in her gas tank. So that's why, so that's our Y. Uh, after driving for T hours, a graph of G is shown below. Write an equation for G, then state the x-intercept of the graph and determine its interpretation. Well, let's start with the x-intercept, and we'll actually use that point. So the x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. So that x-intercept is 15, 0. To interpret that, so 15 is the x, which is the number of hours driven, so... For 15 hours of driving, there are zero, and what does our Y stand for? Number of gallons remaining in the tank. So there are zero gallons of gas left in the tank. So I'm going to use that point, and then I'm also going to use the y-intercept to write the equation. Okay, so this point was 15, 0, this is 0, 15. So the equation, well, for y equals mx plus b, because it's a line, we know the y-intercept. So we know the b is 15, we just need to calculate slope. So, again, using these points, it's going to be 0 minus 15 over 15 minus 0. So negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So our equation, in this case, they want us to use G. So the gallons of gas is negative 1 T for our X plus B, the intercept of 15. And you don't need to write the 1. Um, you can leave it out. So negative T plus 15 would be just fine. All right, example number five. So another word problem. Okay. So Isabella is deciding between two parking garages. So you're driving downtown or maybe you're going to New York City and you're deciding between two parking garages for your car. Garage A, which we're gonna write the equation here, charges an initial fee of $4 plus $3 per hour. Garage B charges an initial fee of $12 to park plus $2 per hour. Let A represent the amount of uh, garage A would charge if she parks for T hours. All right, so let's go for T hours. It's $4 plus $3 per hour. So $4 plus um, $3 per hour and T is the number of hours. So $4 plus 3T. Garage B, um, we're any question for each situation. Garage B is $12 to park plus $2 per hour. Okay, so $12 to park plus $2 per hour, where T is the number of hours. We need to write an equation for each situation, which we did. And then in terms of T, and determine the number of hours parked that would make the, okay, the cost the same. 
So what we do is we set this equal to this. So 4 plus 3t equals 12 plus 2t. Okay, so then um, let's solve for t. I'm going to subtract 4. So we get 3t equals 8 plus 2t. Subtract 2t. And we have a time of 8. So let's just check um, 4 plus 3 times 8. is 28, and then 12 plus 2 times 8 is 28. It works. So the answer, uh, determine the number of hours, 8 hours. All right, moving right along. Number 6. So Grayson makes $10 per hour, right? Um, when he babysits for his younger siblings. Answer the questions below regarding the relationship between the hours spent babysitting and the total money earned. So he's babysitting for his siblings. He makes $10 per hour between the number of hours spent babysitting and the total he earns. So let's use the total T. So he gets his total, right, by making $10 per hour. So the independent variable X, right, so what does your X represent? The X, if we look at this in terms of Y equals MX plus B, this is Y equals MX. So our X is the number of hours babysitting. And our, that's independent because our dependent variable, the total money earned, okay, because um, the not total earned depends on the number of hours babysitting. Okay, so in terms of Z of X, so a function relating these variables is z of x, that would be 10x, $10 per hour. So z of 4, um, meaning 4 times the number of hours babysitting, I don't quite know what the drop downs are, z of 4 would be 10 times 4, right, or 40. So $40 right, for four hours of babysitting. So I don't, again, I don't know what this blank and this blank is because I no longer have it on my screen. All right, seven. Find the x-intercept of each line defined below and compare their values. So anywhere on the x-axis, right, we know that y is zero. So we simply just plug in 0 for y and solve for x. So this would be 0 minus 3, and I'm going to distribute. So negative x plus 4. So negative 3 equals negative x plus 4. Subtract 4. Negative 7 equals negative x. Divide by negative 1, and 7 equals x. So our x-intercept there is 7. Uh, looking here where y is 0, our x-intercept for line b is negative 2. So the x-intercept of line A is 7, the x-intercept is negative 2, therefore the x-intercept of line A is larger, again I don't know what that drop down is, higher, bigger than that of B. 7 is bigger than negative 2. Alright, our last one. Answer the question below based on the graph of the quadratic functions f of x in the table for g of x. So the blank value of f of x, so I actually kept this up on the screen, I'm hoping it's still there, it says the minimum or maximum value of f of x is blank, and there is no blank. Well, this has a minimum value, so let's note. 
min value of negative 8. And this function, we can see the negative 1, negative 1, negative 7, negative 7. And if you were to actually plot these points using this graph, negative 2, 9 right here, negative 1, negative 1 here, 0, negative 7 there, uh, 1, negative 9 here, 2, negative 7, 3, negative 1, we can actually see this parabola. So that might be the better option is to put this one on the same graph. So um, I would have to say the minimum value of f of x is negative 8, and there is no um, max value. The blank value, again, it's a minimum value of g of x is negative 9, right? We can see that, and there is no max value. Therefore, f of x has a um, f of x. How does negative 8 compare to negative 9? Well, that is larger. Has a greater minimum value than g of x. Oops, let's move that up. Sorry about that. And that is it for today. So make sure you study for your test. Go back and do some more practice problems if you need to. And also seek out to Mr. Um, Hart or myself. Reach out to us if you need some help. Have a good day and good luck on your test. Bye-bye.